everyone. To solve this cubic equation, we can just guess and check, obviously, but I'm going to show you something which is very cool. Now, if you go ahead and subtract two from both sides, and you probably saw that bef even before we did that, you're, you're going to notice that the sum of the coefficients, one plus one minus two is equal to zero. You know what that means? You should definitely know this. X equals one. So X equals one is one of the solutions, but that's only one of the solutions. Now we can go ahead and rearrange the terms, manipulate a little bit like this. We can subtract X squared and then add X squared and then subtract X. But I do, I do have an X, so this needs to be followed by X because I do. So what I'm trying to do here is, let me explain a little bit. I'm trying to get X minus one as a factor because I know that X equals one is a solution. Make sense? I hope it does. To get positive X though, I kind of have to follow up with two X and then of course minus two is the last term. Now this is factorable by grouping, isn't that cool? X squared minus, times X minus one plus X times X minus one plus two times X minus one. And now you can factor out the X minus one, which gives us a quadratic x squared plus x plus 2 equals 0. Yes, this channel doesn't focus on complex numbers. I have another channel which is called a plus bi. You can go out and check it out. But we can talk about the complex solutions real quick, besides x equals 1, obviously. We already knew that, right? So from here, by using the quadratic formula, you can basically write this as negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac. That's like 1 minus 8, which is square root of negative seven, but that needs to be written as square root of seven i, divide by two will give you the complex solutions. So along with the x equals one, we have three solutions because this is a cubic equation. Thanks for watching. Bye.